Hi folks, welcome back to On Call with Insignia, where we go on call with leaders innovating the future of Southeast Asia, or as we like to call it, ASEAN Innovation. I'm your host, Paolo Aquino. To all our first-time listeners and watchers on YouTube, welcome to the show. Do give us a follow, subscribe, wherever you are listening in or tuning in, so you can stay tuned to more conversations with leaders innovating the future of Southeast Asia. In this episode, we recap the journey of Paro, the tech company behind Southeast Asia's largest used car marketplace, an end-to-end auto retail platform. Since the start of the podcast in 2020, we have covered their journey and with eight years under their belt, we highlight sharings from Paro's leaders over the past four years. First, we dial back to the early days of the pandemic in 2020 and real-time learnings of CEO Aaron Tan during that period. So what we have learned is that, okay, while demand for trade has decreased, actually the demand for subscription has rose a lot and that has more than enough effect to negate that, that, that drop in business for us. But I generically think that's a matter of, okay, how do we think about business models? How do we think about what the customers are fearful of? Is it safety or is it because they just want to get the cars from the comfort of their home, etc. And move on to innovate on different business models that can survive through these tough times, right? So for us, always constantly thinking about how do we future-proof the business? How do we COVID-proof the business, so to speak, right? So that at the end of the day, this particular situation that we are all in right now becomes more an opportunity versus an issue or a threat for the survival of that sense of the company. Then we get a perspective of that time from the then freshly minted CFO Ernest Chu. Yeah, I really think that all these initiatives that you've taken from, as you mentioned, slashing expenditures, cashing up, and even rethinking how you look at the core business of Cairo, which is really the used car purchases. I think all of these things that you've set in place, along with the rest of Cairo's leadership, has been paying off. And the company has been a bit of positive for the past eight to nine months, which is almost since the lockdown started in Asia. Was this trajectory planned out? What were the factors that enabled Cairo to sustain this balance sheet? To our CEO, co-founders, and senior management credit, we had always planned our businesses to be profitable or have a path to becoming profitable. We used the lockdown to seriously look at our OPEX, our fats, and ways to improve our efficiencies. We came out of the lockdown leaner and meaner. In fact, our cash position did not deplete during the lockdown, and we were free cash flow positive. Moving into 2021, as Paro marked record growth, the company doubled down on its core technologies in AI and machine learning to build even better consumer experiences. We are Southeast Asia's largest leading retail or clothes marketplace. Over the last year itself, the company has grown more than two times, actually year on year, pre-COVID to now. In fact, this year, we are forecasting to end the year at somewhere north of 200,000 units at least by the end of the, this coming financial year. And you know, a, a lot of the growth really has to do with the fact that we are focusing a lot more on B2C sales, basically providing customers with the Amazon.com kind of experience for vehicles, right? So what we're trying to do really at the end of the day is to offer our customers, uh, especially the retail customers, an experience like almost buying an iPhone online or, or buying a you know, tissue paper box online. So much so that all you need to do is just view the vehicles online, go through our process internally, online again, be it to fill out all the details to submit for a bank loan down towards insurance, warranties, and then selecting when you want a car to be delivered to your doorstep. So it's, it's making it dumbed down to, to a process whereby it's so simple, whereby anyone can buy a car online with just a few clicks. And that's how we tend to think about the future of the purchase of cars and stuff like that. And all this, really a lot of what we do over the last year itself, really to double down, triple down into our spend in technology, especially in areas such as AI, machine learning. And I guess more importantly, even within our own people, making sure that we, we brought on people into the team. Recently, we just brought on the nuclear scientists make, to really help lead and uh, supercharge our efforts in the data science, computer vision, magnetic resonance field. And that nuclear scientist is none other than Brian Pan, who became Paro's group chief scientist, as well as currently leading up the company's Indonesia operations. Aaron, my buddy from Army Days, founded Caro. And we've always been chatting about cars from pricing to taxation to intercontinental exports. Coincidentally, more than a year ago, Aaron asked, whether I was interested in heading up a data science team to anchor the digitalization of the car trade. Okay, this will be a team that will be deeply grounded in math, science, and technology. It took me a long time, probably two whole seconds before I say yes. I think really a heartwarming sharing and sorry, and it's great that Aaron was able to reach out to you and you're able to maintain that relationship over the past 10 years. 
Cairo has been known for not just being an auto retail unicorn, but the fact that the, the growth of, of Cairo has been driven a lot by AI, machine learning, data science, and now you're part of the team to lead up that function. So maybe you can share what does it mean to be chief scientist officer leading up this data science team, especially at Cairo. So being a chief scientist at Cairo has been an amazing experience so far. I oversee all the machine learning and AI programs that we have at Cairo. The core mandate for my team is innovations. We run initiatives with AI to improve people's car ownership and usage experience with a focus on Southeast Asia. Here at Caro, we are involved in almost every vertical relating to cars, from buying, selling, leasing, insurance, and finance. You name it, we do it. And we do it differently, empowered by AI ML. So some examples include price automation in car transactions, distance-based and behavioral-based insurance premiums and maintenance costs for cars, AI monitoring of car engine health to automated inspection and listing of cars. This and much more form the foundation of AI ML in Cairo. Awesome, yeah, you're basically covering the whole retail experience, which is a really huge stack of different things to, to think of and, and cover. But in your time here so far, since you joined, I think last year, if I'm not mistaken, what was the biggest impact that you've been able to make in your role, would you say? I guess the biggest impact that we've made will be the pricing of cars. The spread between buy and sell car price used to be huge with data opacity. But now with Caro, we are able to give consumer the best price for the car, be it purchase or sale transaction. And we have experienced a rapidly growing customer base because of our excellent pricing and great service. We are one of the fastest growing companies in Singapore for the past two years running with a compound annual growth rate at 422% in 2021. Going into 2022, we hear from Aaron reflecting on another pandemic learning and how that has impacted the company's approach to growth until today. So I think one thing I, I learned at least as a result of the pandemic is the importance really of Unicomics, building the, the company profitably, building, making sure that you grow responsibly, right? I think that has been the biggest takeaway that I had, which is it's not so easy, right? Because if you think about life, what happens is that you have your competitors, you have other comparables running sometimes a hit, so to speak. Perceivably, right? In a sense, you perceive them to be a hit because their revenue is faster. So one thing we learn at the end of the day, really very simplistically, is that don't look at what is happening in front of you and then assume that those guys are doing well and as a result, you follow, right? So, you know, in locally, we always say monkey see, monkey do, so to speak. One thing we, we learn really is so do not need to follow what other people think. I think at the end of the day, common sense prevail. And I think today, we are a little bit more successful than the other comms or wherever, primarily because of the, the very fact that we stayed true to our game. We basically ensured that we were disciplined on our cost. We ensured that we were disciplined when we went out. And then when the pandemic hit, it actually didn't really affect us that much. To be very frank, in fact, sales rose through the roof. We were the fastest growing company in APEC last year company has been growing about at least two to three times year on year in terms of top line. I think this year, run rate revenue is already at about a billion plus. Our GPM has tripled. In fact, we are also going to keep it that positive this year, right? So honestly, this is what I learned, which is do not fall to the track of seeing what's ahead of you and just follow. Finally, Carl marked record profitability in 2023, and we had the CFO Ernest Chu back on the show to share key learnings. So I think we can just hit it off the park and start with a rundown of all the highlights from the past year that really shaped the trajectory of Cairo and led to this very headline that I, that I just mentioned, the best quarter in terms of profitability for Cairo. We reported record profits last quarter, we reported record EBITDA, which was 3x the entire full year last year. We are well on track to achieve more than 10x full year EBITDA compared to our entire last financial year. On top of that, we grew our pro gross profit margins. We pretty much doubled that to close to mid-teens. We achieved positive operating profits and even positive adjusted net profits. We were well ahead of in terms of meeting our profit targets. I, I dare say that we are one of very few high growth tech startups that is even profitable and it's across all metrics, EBITDA, operating profit, and adjusted net profits. And reflecting back, it's been a pretty incredible last 12 months since mid last year where we shifted gears. We are amongst the first to pivot towards optimizing to achieve positive EBITDA and profitability whilst maintaining strong, reasonable revenue growth. The key word 
across all things that we do is balance, not overgrowing and burning excessively on one end, nor becoming extremely profitable above all else whilst degrowing, destroying customer satisfaction, etc. Trent, and on that note of balance, thank you for joining us on this call. Make sure you get notified on when to dial and by following us wherever you're listening to us. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, toss in a like, and let us know if you'd like to hear more of this topic in the comments. See you all in our next call.